Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Rebecca and today I'm going to be going over my methods for basic dress construction in a mid-century inspired Doctor Who themed outfit. So first I cut my pieces. The fabric was already pre-washed and ironed and the bodice pattern is one I made myself. It's a one dart bodice with a short all-in-one sleeve, a scoop neckline and allowance for a zipper closure in the centre back. I cut this out twice, once for the bodice and once for a bodice lining, just remembering to mark the notches and drill holes. It is also worth noting that I did cut the bodice lining pieces upside down on the print, so if you ever see the print is upside down on the bodice pieces, those are the lining pieces, just so you can differentiate them. For the skirt pieces, instead of working from a pattern, I just marked and cut some 65 centimeter long panels from the fabric and pleated them up until I had the correct width. Usually these panels would be seen together before being pleated, but because I wasn't working from a pattern, I just made sure to include a one centimeter seam allowance at the end of each width so that I could sew them together once I had enough for a skirt. I ended up using two 60 by 65 panels and one 95 by 65 panel joined together to create a skirt with a centre back opening. To pleat the panels up into 12 centimetre box pleats, I used a tape measure and pins to mark a 6 centimetre width, pleated it up and then repeated it in the other direction to make the other half of the box pleat. There are loads of other ways to do this, this is just how I like to do it. Mm. Next I just gave all the pieces a good press and pressed the pleats into place. You can do this before or after they're stitched down, I just like to do it before so that they're nice and crisp to go through the machine. Now I just used the edge of the presser foot as a guideline and ran a stitch across the top of the pleats to hold them in place. Here I'm just running the long edges of the skirt panels that weren't cut on the selvage through the overlocker to stop them from fraying and clean them up a bit. Next, I just pinned those skirt panels right sides together, leaving the centre back seam open and stitched those seams with a one centimetre seam allowance, pressing them closed.
darts on my bodice were marked with notches and drill holes. So next, I use those to pin my darts together on the front and back bodice and bodice lining. The drill hole marks 1.5 centimeters from the darts point. So I just used a tape measure to mark 1.5 centimeters from the drill hole and move my pin up so that I remember where I need to stop sewing. When they're under the machine, I just use my tape measure to double check that I'm sewing a straight line. And then sew them all in place and press them to one side. I'm just pinning and stitching the shoulder seams and the side seams together with a one centimeter seam allowance on both the bodice and the lining. Remembering to clip the underarm curve and press those seams open as well. I like to line my dresses to the waistline and then leave the skirt unlined. So to finish off the bottom edge of the bodice lining, I just closed it up with some pre-packaged bias tape. I opened one edge and stitched along the groove with the right side of the tape facing the right side of the bodice lining. then press the rest of the tape open, down and under.
finish off, I ran an edge stitch along the seam, catching in the underside of the tape and enclosing the raw edges. Next, I pin the bodice onto the skirt right sides together, starting by matching at the centres and centre back edges and pinning outwards. sewing this in place with a one centimeter seam allowance and pressing the finished seam up towards the bodice. Here I'm just closing up the back seam below where the end of the zipper will sit using a 2cm allowance and pressing this open. and then just inserting an invisible zipper using My Machine's invisible zipper presser foot to help hold the coils open. To start attaching the bodice lining to the bodice, I just trimmed off the 2cm seam allowance at the centre back. Then flipping out the zipper seam on the bodice to lie flat, pinning the lining to the dress bodice right sides together, lining the centre back edge of the lining up to the edge of the zipper tape. Sewing it in place using the presser foot guided along the teeth of the zip. Once that's done, I matched up the bodice necklines right sides together, 
making sure to fold the outer bodice around the zipper teeth as if the exposed zipper tape were an extension of the lining. I secured this with pins, making sure that the centre front points and shoulder seams all matched up and then sewed using a half centimetre seam allowance. Did a quick understitch to tack the seam allowance to the lining and then turned and pressed everything out. To so finish off the armhole edges, I just tucked in the seam allowances and ran an edge stitch all the way around to finish them off. Finished off the skirt with a double turned hem, first pressing it up by one centimetre and then pinning it up by another two. I did consider finishing this hem by hand, but there's so much going on in the busy print that I figured it didn't really matter if there was visible stitching on the outside. I've also used some silver glitter heat transfer vinyl to make some iron-on transfers for the skirt and the bodice. Pressing them in place using a pressing cloth and a dry iron on a high heat.
first I made a coordinating belt for the dress using some black cotton broadcloth and a medium weight fusible interfacing, folding the length in half and sewing it into a tube. I then trimmed down the excess seam allowance and pressed it out, pressing the ends raw edges inwards and closing them up with a top stitch. I did a quick machine buttonhole on one end and sewed a button to the other to close. Here I'm adding a few more heat transfers onto the belt and then moving on to making a simple coordinating pillbox hat. I didn't film this entire process but I'll link some helpful blog posts and tutorials in the description. I started by making a paper pattern and then cut it out of buckram securing some millinery wire to the edges to create a base before covering it. My finished hat had a 7cm tall stand and a 17cm diameter. And that's it, it's all done, it's all finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing how everything came together. If you have any feedback or ideas for video topics you'd like to see from me, just leave them in the comments. 